Our next speaker is Polly Wee Tsai. Polly is professor at the University of the Philippines. She completed her PhD at the University of the Philippines and a Doctor of Science degree at Nagoya University, Japan. Her research interests are partial differential equations and mathematical biology. Professor, it's C, isn't it? <laughs> C, yes. Professor C has received awards for her contributions to mathematics from the National Academy of Science and Technology of the Philippines, the Third World Academy of Science, and the National Research Council of the Philippines. She is a member of IMU's Commission for Developing Countries and has just been elected for the next term as well. And she is editor of the recently published regional report called Mathematics in South Asia, Challenges and Opportunities. Professor C, I invite you to address us on the CDC's four-part vision for graduate student support, international mentoring, a volunteer lecturer program, and government business industry internships and research collaborations. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I have been asked to present some of the priorities of the Commission for Developing Countries as it looks to the future. Rather than presenting abstractions or rationales for those abstractions, I have chosen to tell a more personal story incorporating the perspective of one female mathematician in a single developing country. I hope, that, I hope that my circumstance, the support and mentoring that I have received and how it has enabled me to contribute to the mathematical community in my region is representative of the larger reality of mathematics in developing countries. The accomplishments of those that supported the development of many like myself in a variety of countries are to be recognized but it is perhaps even more important how and now to recognize the mathematical aspiration of many more still lacking the opportunities that I and others like me have enjoyed. I'm sure that all of you have experienced someone who make a lasting inspiration in your life. And just like some of you here, I would not have gotten into mathematics if it were not for my high school math teacher. My teacher was able to make us appreciate numbers and their various operation application to very lucid and comprehensible explanations and chalkboard illustration. He would begin his class right on the dot and patiently show us how to tackle problems. Inside and outside the classroom, he was kind and supportive so that one could really feel his love for his job in particular and for mathematics in general. Our math teacher also worked in the morning in another school to augment his income so that young as I was, I became aware how financially unrewarding it is being a high school teacher in my country. Be that as it may, the inspiration that our teacher forged upon us was something that cannot be measured by any monetary valuation. In 1974, after my BS degree of, in mathematics from the University of the Philippines, I had the privilege of being able to enroll in two graduate courses under Professor Li Peng Yi, who was then an asylum visiting professor of UP math department for one semester, and he was also an associate professor of Nanyang University, Singapore. Professor Lee's style of, uh, by the way, ASAIL is the Association of Southeast Asian Institute of Higher Learning. Professor Lee's style of teaching was something that, that just grabs your attention. He not only explained lessons with chalk and board, but he also elucidated on proofs and concepts through 
gestures, and body movements. The class does never feel sleepy or uninteresting. Each lesson, each session was a source of fun and fascination. Years later, my classmates and I would gather and fondly remember those times with Professor Lee. Professor Lee also figured as a major influence in my career as in mathematics when he graciously accepted me as his master's thesis student in 1975 and later on in 1979 as his doctoral dissertation student. His relationship with UP is a case of distinguished mathematician from Singapore coming over to a developing country like the Philippines to volunteer as lecturer and thesis advisor of mathematics students with minimal funding. This type of volunteering, this type of volunteerism is what is currently being supported by CDC as the volunteer lecturer. Back then, in the early 1970s, there were only three mathematicians in the Philippines. And one of them is Professor Bienvenido Nebres, a leading Filipino mathematician who would also become my mentor later. Professor Nebres foresaw the need to build a critical mass of mathematicians in the country as a major instrument for national development. He realized focusing all his efforts on his own research would not help much in the country's development. So he selflessly and tirelessly worked on the institution of a PhD consortium program in mathematics in the country. In the country. So with limited resources, he and some of his colleagues formed what they called the PhD consortium program among three universities namely the University of the Philippines, UP, Ateneo de Manila University, and De La Salle University. The PhD consortium program in math began in 1978 with support from the national government. Four decades following the formation of the consortium, the country now has over 100 active PhD holders in mathematics and vigorous research groups in several universities. It was during this period from 79 to 82 that I was granted a scholarship jointly by two of our government agencies to pursue my PhD from UP. I was then able to visit Professor Lee, now in University of uh, National University of Singapore, for two months under the Sandwich Program. Now this program enables local PhD students to do part of their dissertation research in a foreign university or research institute. And during those days, my discussions in math of mathematics with him were coursed through letters. I remember that his letters were always very positive and uh, filled with words of uh, motivation and hopes for me to finish writing my dissertation in time for my oral defense in 1982. So finally obtained my PhD degree with Professor Lee as my foreign advisor and Professor Rolando Danao of UP as my local advisor. Now this set up of joint mentoring under the sandwich program of the consortium with foreign uh, institution has produced many PhD graduates. From 1982, the first two batches of graduates from the consortium began teaching and co-supervising thesis of graduate students. I was among the second batch of uh, graduates of the consortium. In turn, our former students, they are right now teaching also and doing research in mathematics, and they are also supervising thesis of their graduate students in their respective universities. Needless to say, the impact of the consortium in, in sustaining the mathematics uh, graduate programs of the country's main university had been more than significant. Over the years, there has been a, a very significant increase in publication and presentations of Filipino mathematicians in the uh, regional and uh, international conferences. The critical mass of mathematicians produced through consortium continues to be active members of the global math community. 
Years later, in uh, 2012, in this article, a passage of 40 years of math and math education, Professor Lee wrote, the journey of training local PhDs was long but fruitful. Today, we see a strong and vibrant mathematics community in the Philippines. All the effort we put in has been more than worthwhile. The Philippine math community is what it is today because of the generous assistance and support of all our uh, colleagues and funding agencies through the years from the 1970s up to the present. The success of this capacity building of the consortium would certainly not be possible without the support of a strong regional and international network. In the early years of SIMS, it was fortunate to have received support from the International Mathematical Union through its secretary, Professor Jack Louis Vions, and the International Commission on Mathematics Instruction, Secretary Professor Yuki Yoshi Kawada. They were both instrumental in the integration of the math communities in the Southeast Asia with the international math community. And both of them were very helpful in sending the best speakers and in supporting financially the regional workshops and other activities. The 1975 Summer Institute in Graph Theory was the first workshop held in Manila and was organized by SIMS. And this workshop was very important for us because mathematic mathematicians from SIMS, France, Japan, and those who began the Math Society of the Philippines in 1972, they helped set the direction toward more research and more doctoral candidates in mathematics. And this was the beginning of building up an international network. Therefore, in 1978, when the consortium was formed, linkages were established that provided funds for visiting lecturers and for research. So many PhD students, they were able to spend time overseas under the sandwich program. Now much of the external support was provided by institutions and funding agencies from Singapore, the Lee Foundation, ASAIL, Japan, the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, France from the French Embassy, Australia from the Australian Universities International Development Program, AUIDP, and Germany from DAAT, German Academic Exchange Service. We believe that the friendships that individual mathematicians forged with their counterparts through the years have laid the foundations for an enduring exchange between the Philippines and these countries. Now, one such example is our personal friendship with Professor Sherry Prager of the University of Western Australia. Professor Prager supervised the dissertation work of three consortium students in 1990s, in the 1990s, under the AUIDP. Although the program terminated many years ago, the linkage with her carries on. And last year, one of our junior faculty member, members obtained her PhD degree from UWA under Professor Prager's supervision. And on, on a personal note, I had the privilege of serving as SIMS president in 98 to 99, and this experience has allowed me to establish contacts with colleagues from the region, and in particular, I'm very thankful for my friendship with them because they have graciously responded to us when we, Professor D and I, did a survey for the CDC on the state of mathematics and math education in Southeast Asian region. In 2011, Professor Michelle Jambu, who was then the director of SIMPA, asked Professor Fidel Nemenso of the University of the Philippines if he can teach a 50-hour course in number theory as part of the Master of Mathematics program at the Royal University of Phnom Penh, Cambodia. So with support from the volunteer lecturer program of CDC, Professor Nemenso went to Cambodia twice in 2012 and 2014. The VLP program approved by the Developing Countries Strategy Group of IMU aims to support volunteer lecturers, to give 
intensive short courses in universities in the developing world to support their degree programs in mathematics. And this program is carried out with help from SIMPA and also the U U.S. National Committee on Mathematics. Professor Nemenso observed that mathematics education in Cambodia was way behind counterparts in other countries in the region. And the Master in Math program is the only uh, graduate program in mathematics in Cambodia. And this uh, master program is being coordinated by SIMPA and has invited guest lecturers from France, USA, Japan, and other countries in Southeast Asia, of course, to give uh, graduate courses. It is hoped that the best among the graduates of the program will pursue higher studies and they will take the lead in sustaining the graduate program and also in training new generations of mathematics students and researchers in Cambodia. So aside from this vital role played by the VLP, it is able to address the imbalance of math mathematics levels in the various countries in the region, which is important for better math development in the future. So, as a consequence of VLP in Cambodia, in October 2012, five outstanding students from the master program at RUPP, they were uh, selected and supported by SIMPA to receive a scholarship to continue their master of studies in the Philippines at the Institute of Mathematics of the University of the Philippines. They started their MS Math and also MS uh, Applied Math program with a monetary support of US dollar, 8,000 US dollar from CDC. And as a counterpart support, UP waived the student, the foreign student fee of these five students. And one of these five students, Mr. Beng, who is who in my interview with him expressed immense gratitude to the CDC and SIMPA. To quote him, thus, SIMPA and CDC support are very important for us. Without financial support from them, we would not be able to pursue our study in UP. And more importantly, if CDC and SIMPA did not contribute its effort in the initiative of sending us to study here, some of us may have been distracted from mathematics and would not pursue our study in higher level in mathematics. So one can see the importance of supporting outstanding students in mathematics from developing countries. Let me cite another uh, scholarship support. So in 2004, the African Mathematics Millennium Science Initiative was established. And this is a uh, distributed network of mathematics promotion with five regional offices in sub-Saharan Africa. One key focus of AMMSI is to award partial scholarship grants to postgraduate students to enable them to complete their studies. As a result of this, there is an increase in the number of students at a number of graduate programs in sub-Saharan Africa. And the CDC supported the program with the amount of uh, 22,000 US dollars in the academic year 2012 and 13. So one can see that there's a need to continue funding uh, AMMSI scholarship program to maintain its vital role or vital work of providing the next generation of mathematical leadership in this African continent. Therefore, supporting graduate studies is still the largest single need among the math communities in developing countries. To partially address this need, INU will launch a fundraising program called the ADAPT a graduate student program at the ICM 2014. Now the mentoring partnership between Professor Gregory Sankran 
the mentor from the University of Bath, United Kingdom, and Professor Puma Kazosi of Math Department, Material University, Uganda, started in 2008. Professor Sankran visited Makerel University three times in 2008, 2009, and 2011. So he gave advanced short courses in all his visits and at the same time completed the following activities which were priorities specific to the needs of the Makerel University. First, he gave useful, important contribution to the revision of its Master uh, of Science program to improve graduate education in mathematics in the longer term. Next, he created opportunities for PhD students to study in or outside Africa. He also supervised and completed the Master of Projects of two graduate students. Finally, she st he started research collaboration with a junior faculty member. So all of these activities show us how Professor Sankran, an individual mathematician from United Kingdom outside Africa, helps raise the level of higher mathematics and the teaching in Uganda, a country in Africa. As a result of this, the number of students in the program has risen sharply, and therefore this Partnership is a success story of the project called Mentoring African Research in Mathematics, or MARM scheme. It was implemented by IMU and AMMSI in 2005, and the scheme is assisted by the London Mathematical Society. It is financially supported by the Notfield Foundation and the Liver Home Trust. This scheme is essential, it's very important, because it not only nurtures the next generation of African mathematicians and mathematics leader, but it also counters brain drain by supporting qualified math professional in the region. To date, 17 mentoring partnerships have so far been set up, and for the government, since uh, salary, scholarships, education practices, and infrastructures are determined by national governments, and therefore more steps should be taken to seek the support of political leaders and, and government agency. A strong, next, a strong culture of collaboration between mathematicians in the academe and those of the business and industry needs to be fostered, and of course, is a desirable goal for both ends. In the next five years, there will be a significant increase in the number of graduate students in each region due to the graduate student scholarships and other incentives provided by their government and other funding agencies. And the growth rate will be higher compared with all the years in the past with mostly local graduates who have limited or no exposure at all to an international environment. Therefore, supporting young mathematicians in the developing world through travel grants is one aspect where assistance is needed as well. So travel to attend conferences will give them a chance to meet possible research collaborators. We still have many success stories to tell as we can see some similarities in Africa and Latin America. Now, let me conclude my presentation with the following two suggestions. First, we think long term. Now, the first Asia Regional Conference in Mathematics, Education's IRCOME, mentioned by Professor Pascoro a while ago, has been carried on for 35 years. So many things that happen now can be traced back to one of the conferences years ago. So we can see the outcome years later. For example, the Realistic Mathematics Education for Indonesia, PMRI, was initiated at the IRCOME meeting in Shanghai in 94. So PR PMRI was supported by Dutch and Indonesian governments. Its impact was beyond mathematics and beyond classroom. It reformed the culture and quality of math education in primary schools in Indonesia. So all these success stories are living proofs 
that international and regional support and collaboration yield programs that have a lasting impact on the uh, advancement of mathematics and math education in, de in developing countries. Second is to level up mathematics in each region. In order for each region to move on as a whole unit and not individually, we must balance the uh, discrepancies among the countries. Now is the best time to do all these things as they are more happening in the region than ever before. We must bring the countries closer together within the region. I end my presentation here and thank you very much for listening. again to thank our uh, Professor C for illustrating the CDC vision um, so effectively by sharing her own story and I must say I enjoyed hearing many stories about the Philippines as I have very fond memories of the rewarding journey that I took with several Filipino mathematicians. Thank you very much Professor C.